virtual reality and the Half-Life series both have struggled with the weight of expectations put upon them. Half-Life and its sequels are treasured games that each redefined the first-person shooter in their own ways. Yet developer Valve Software has left Half-Life's story unfinished now for 13 years, recently admitting that previous attempts to continue it were, in its own view, simply not good enough. VR, meanwhile, offers the promise of unparalleled immersion, the ability to let players perceive virtual environments and touch objects as if they were present in the real world. But factors such as high price points, complex setups, and the physical demands of playing have seen the tech struggle to bring that magic into the mainstream. Now, Valve has attempted to solve both problems at once, creating a new Half-Life game designed specifically for VR. The results of this are nothing short of spectacular, delivering an expertly crafted Half-Life tale inside of a knockout VR experience. Alex isn't a direct continuation of Half-Life's story, unfortunately. Instead, it takes place five years before the events of Half-Life 2. You also don't play as the series' protagonist, Gordon Freeman, but but as his Half-Life 2 companion, Alex Vance. In this prequel, Alex is a 19-year-old rebel fighting a guerrilla war against a force of alien invaders that we know all too well named the Combine. The game opens with a breathtaking demonstration of VR's ability to represent scale. Performing reconnaissance for the rebels, Alex stands atop a balcony overlooking the rooftops of City 17 a sweeping vista of pastel-colored townhouses sitting in the cobalt blue shadow of the Combine's towering citadel. The introduction also lets you dabble with a VR unique control system, twiddle with radios, and even write with felt-tip pens on windows before getting to the heart of the matter. I'm going to pause right there and tell you that you have to check out this math teacher's class that he posted on YouTube. It was him doing a geometry lesson because he's locked out from school but still teaching via the internet, and he did it all within Half-Life Alex. It was quite a lesson, and I'm sure all of his students were enthralled, and I'm sure this is not the last time that we're going to see it. Uh, back to the Half-Life story. Your father, Eli, has been abducted by civil protection, and you, Alex, need to venture into the city's alien-infested quarantine zone to rescue him. To aid her mission, Alex has several VR-enhanced tools at her disposal. A pair of gravity gloves enable her to move objects with a flick of the wrist, which can then be caught mid-air by pressing the controller's grip button and is so much fun. Alongside this, Alex has a remote device for hacking electrical systems and several weapons that must all be handled, aimed, and reloaded using virtual hands. Much of this is familiar territory to VR applications. What makes Alex special, though, is a more general symbiosis between the technology and the Half-Life universe. VR adds so much texture to City 17 and its motley inhabitants. This is shown in striking fashion by the head crabs, Half-Life scuttling aliens who leap at your face and scare the out of you. In previous Half-Life games, these critters were little more than crowbar fodder. Here, though, you get a sense of their weight and power, how those leathery limbs and twitching legs could crack a human skull like a combination safe. Speaking of cracking things, VR adds tactile detail to the Combine's strange technology. Many terminals that you come across are protected by holographic security systems that can be manipulated with virtual hands. These hacking puzzles make fantastic use of VR tech, although one could argue Alex's designers are overly fond of obstructing your progress with them. As for what Half-Life brings to VR, how to structure, pacing, narrative, character, dazzling set pieces, and frantic action sound. 
Like all of the Half-Life games, each of Alex's 11 chapters has a distinct theme. Whether it's exploring a dilapidated hotel infested by alien spores, or battling Combine soldiers through the chimney stacks and brick warehouses of City 17's industrial district, the game sports a remarkable tonal range. At several points, it becomes an outright survival horror game, with Alex battling zombies and head crabs in the cramped darkness of the city's sewers and subways. But Alex and her calm-linked companion Russell lend levity to even the darkest moments via first-rate voice acting and a script packed with genuinely funny jokes. Valve's debut VR game after years of enticing demos is a showcase of how to use this tech for long-form narratives, and it's a scintillating new entry in the Half-Life series. It may not be exactly the Half-Life game fans hoped for, lacking that all-important three number on the end, but from Left 4 Dead to Portal, Valve is truly a master at giving players games they didn't know that they wanted. Half-Life Alex is just another example of that ability to surprise, delight, and innovate. Thanks for watching your weekly tech update. If you have a story you think we need to feature on the program, uh, get in touch with me. Send me an email at djraymcneil at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook at your weekly tech update. And check out the podcast, audio and video versions available on iTunes, Google, Spotify, audio burst, and elsewhere on the interwebs. Till next time, I'm Ray McNeil. Stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. And now, here's your moment of joy. Tech Update brought to you by Holiday Home Care, Phillip Island, Victoria, Australia. It's your turn to relax. Before you get on holiday on the island, contact Holiday Home Care. We can set up your residence or holiday rental, do the shopping for you, provide linen and towels, and make sure it's all ready by the time you get here, giving you more time to enjoy what Phillip Island has to offer. For more information, visit HolidayHomeCarePI.com or email HolidayHomeCarePI at gmail.com.